Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have 10 hearings in a case where mom abandoned her son at his stepfather's home for over seven months with no contact. But now stepdad and his sister are motioning for an emergency guardianship because the child is struggling and they need the authority to be able to get him the medical services he needs and that mom has been ignoring. Mom shows up for many of these hearings in an altered state and demands that her son is returned to her, claiming that she never abandoned him and someone should have called her to let her know if he was having troubles. She makes constant demands and wild claims about how traumatic court is for her. She has tantrums and meltdowns when she isn't granted visitation. And she even gets caught with a water bottle down her pants when she tried to fake a court-ordered drug test. Let's see what the judge thinks of her antics. All right. Guardianship of Brunswick uh, Swanson. Um, yeah, I'm here. And okay. All right, so the um petitioner is here. It looks like Shira Kroll is here. I see Shira. Um Brad Peters, are you part of this case? Um I Your Honor, I have been taking care of Brunswick for the last eight months. He was left with me um, because he, Miss Kroll, knew it would be a safe place for him. Um, You're the brother of Miss um, Cutbirth. I am. Okay. And are you in agreement with her being the uh, guardian? At this time, Your Honor, yes. Um, even if it was on a temporary basis until some services can be put in place for him. And he's got a lot of needs going on around the situation that me and his mother had a pretty tumultuous uh, last three years, especially. And it's had a severe effect on him as to the other children have adjusted better to it. Um, he needs to be in an environment right now where he has a mom and a dad in home. And that's what his needs are crying out for right now. And it's just me and my two daughters here. And it got really severe um, to the point to where I couldn't, I was having a hard time managing and taking care of the other kids and keeping schedules and stuff because the behavioral needs were so severe. And because I'm not his biological father, even though I've been a part of his life, I am his dad and I will always be his dad. And I, and I would never ever, give up on that opportunity um he's a great kid he just has a lot of needs right now that i can't get and because i don't have legal guardianship of him or rights of my own um they won't imply services for me they won't allow me to get the services that he need and and i've tried every avenue all right right now um on an immediate emergency basis miss cutbirth is the guardian so okay. Yes. You're okay with that. All right. Yeah. I'm not. And Ms. Kroll, I want to hear from you. What What's your position on this? Uh, you're muted right now. If you could unmute yourself. Oh, there sorry. You um, I just was notified of this two days ago. I would like to postpone it so I'd have more time to prepare. Okay. And if I can have um, a visit at, at least one or two days a week until then. I haven't been able to see my son due to the no contact order between me and his father. Uh, I brought him home and then haven't been able to get him. I've tried twice to get him from school and I've been calling the school and checking in and they said he's been doing good. I was just informed that he wasn't. So this is new to me and I have a place where I could take my son if I needed to um, and have one-on-one -on -one attention with him. I haven't been able to see him since the order was instated seven months ago, which is crazy. Um, with all this in and out with the courts, uh, I've developed a huge fear. I've thrown up twice since I've just been waiting just to see us, uh, see you. Um, having a really hard time with courts. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to see my kids at all. No visits were ever instated and I haven't made it. I've tried, uh, disputing the last hearing and, couldn't get served in time and kind of took advantage of not having to, uh, or not, I don't know. Let me talk to Ms. Uh, Cutbirth. Um, 
right now I'm, I'm somewhat relying on you. Do you have any objection right. to Ms. Kroll having some contact? Uh, um, with, my uh, only, my only objection is, is that Bruno hasn't seen her in seven months and I am concerned about his mental health and his emotional well-being. Um, I did just this morning have his intake for counseling. And so I would think that it would be best for him to be able to establish a relationship with a counselor and maybe speak with that counselor about what would be best interest of Bruno. Um, Ms. Kroll mentioned that, Shiver mentioned that, I don't like calling by last names, I'm not that formal, but um, Shiver had mentioned that, you know, there was an order in place. When that order was put in place, she actually had Bruno in her custody, and she made the decision to leave him with Brad, knowing that there was an order in place that would mean that she couldn't have a very easy time getting him back. Um, uh, and then... I did um, not leave him there when the order was in place. Um, she did, and it was six days before her court date. It was well, whatever. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't the know order, exactly. No. The it's order a, had stop one at a time. I'm and sorry. There had been a temporary order in place. That, um, that that issue isn't going to be despised. right. That's a separate issue. I just my thing is is that I just want regardless of the circumstances surrounding why she hasn't seen Bruno, Bruno doesn't understand any of that. He's yeah. a 10 year old. So in his mind, he just hasn't seen his mom in seven months. He remembers his mom. He does. And he misses her to be completely honest, obviously. Um, I really am just looking out for what's in Bruno's best interest. I'm trying to make sure that um, I don't want to take Bruno from anybody. I just want him to be in a safe situation. Do you he, think a telephone or a video visit would work? Um, okay. Yeah, or I think that that would be okay. I mean, um, I honestly have been leaving it up to Bruno. I've, as far as even talking to Brad, Brad asked to talk to him the other day. And, and I was like, Bruno, do you want to talk to Brad? And he said, no. And I said, sorry, Brad, Bruno doesn't want to talk to you. And I'm not, I'm trying to give him his own autonomy, if that makes sense. Um, I I haven't ever dealt with a situation of abandonment before. I just, I know how to deal with big behaviors because I've gone to school for educa early education and I've taken classes like conscious discipline. So I know how to help with that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm, Bruno means a lot to me. I've, he's, I've been in his life since he was a baby, just like Brad and Shira. <clears throat> and, um, I'm you wanting know. to postpone this. I, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm not making much in the way of decisions today. I'm right. still I'm really attacked right now. Uh, I'll just okay. So for the immediate term, um, I'm going to continue the immediate emergency minor guardianship in favor of Ms. Cutler. Okay. I'm going to allow telephone or video visits twice a week. Okay. And hopefully, I don't think there's a protection order between the two of you. No, not at all. I'm also going to appoint what's called a court visitor. You've heard from several of them that I um, appointed in the other cases. Their job is to look at the case and give recommendations to the court. Okay. We do this on a rotating basis. I just go to the next name on the list. Uh, the name next name on our list is Sherry Farr. And um, we will give her your information and she will get a hold of you. Um, it really is best for everybody to cooperate with her. That's what helps the court um, make a correct decision. Um, I will put this out. Um, let me put it out of mind. Um, I'm not going to see my son for a month. Well, 
I haven't had any way to get a hold of him or besides doing the whole court thing and serving and doing all that. And I haven't, I'm not ready for court today. I've had two days. Nobody told me anything was going wrong. I've asked the school if he's doing good. He's been told he's been doing good. Cadron didn't let me know. Nobody even checked to see what my living situation was. They just assumed. Okay. And, and I did, Bruno came home before my final court date. I didn't anticipate it going the way it did. Or I wouldn't have sent him home at all. You want, I'm, I'm happy to have you come back sooner when you have a chance to look at this. Um, do you wanna do that? I could do it next week. I, I can't do it on the 27th or I could um, have you come back on the 4th, which would be a little sooner. You said the 4th? 4th of May. So either the 20th of April or the 4th of May. Is the 20th, Your Honor, I'm sorry, is the 20th next week? Yes. I, um, I'm i in school currently and, oh, never mind. It's a Thursday. I was thinking <laughs> Tuesdays are my classes. Never mind. That would I work don't. either way. I'm just wondering, Ms. Kral Kater wanted uh, more time to prepare and I'm willing to right. have a hearing sooner so she has a chance to prepare. I don't see the... I wish somebody would have let me know that things were going the way they were. I would have picked up Bruno as soon as I could. Like Your Honor, if I may, things were going well for um, pretty much the entire time. There was the normal stuff that Ms. Kroll and I dealt with as parents um, in the 10 years that we were together. But um, over the last few months before I had his aunt get involved and pick him up, um, they had gotten much more extreme. They were getting worse at school and they were getting worse here at the house again. And like I said, I want to make sure that he has the best opportunities available to him. It was not an easy decision for me to make. I don't, I still feel it, it's hard because we love him and care about him, all of us. And I know his, and I know his mother does. Um, but sometimes I believe that loving someone enough is giving them the right opportunity. Talking. And I want Bruno to have the best opportunities for the help he needs. Even if I can't give him that right now. I'm totally capable of taking my son to appointments one-on-one. -on -one. Kadrian has six kids at well, her house, he, a full-time job and school. Okay. This is, doesn't even make sense. I'm, and we may get you know, to I that. never had the opportunity to have my son. You, All right. right. So let's, let's go back. I'm going to appoint Sherry Farr as a court visitor. She's going to investigate and let me know about the situation with the parties. Uh, I'll say if, if Ms. Kroll is capable uh, of taking care of her son uh, adequately, then uh, it's likely that the custody will stay with her. That's that's sure. the way the statute is set up. Absolutely. But um, what I don't know is whether that's the case right now. Sherry right. Farr is going to help determine that. I'm going to leave Ms. Cutberth in as the guardian. And so she has full authority until our next hearing. The next hearing will be on May 4th. And uh, I'm happy to hear any response that Ms. Kroll has at that point. As I indicated, um, um, telephone and vid video visits. Uh, twice a week? Can work, yes, twice a week. Okay. Uh, I'm not ordering in-person visits at this point, um, just because I want some feedback from Ms. Farr before we get there. Thank you. Okay. Um, for the May 4th hearing, that's at 1030 as well? Yes, 1030. Perfect. Thursday at 10. All right. Uh, Ms. Kroll, I understand you're frustrated with, with the wait, um, but I need to act in a way that makes sure uh, that you're 
son is protected and so i need to take these steps okay all right mm -hmm. all right thank you thank, thank you. you your honor have a great day we'll back here on the fourth thank you on cutworth here at this point uh, Ms. Farr, have you been able to um, look into this case? Um, I've read the pleadings, Your Honor. I uh, left a message for Ms. Uh, Cut. Is it oh, she, she's in the um, waiting room right now. Okay. So let's bring her in. And I was just talking with Ms. Farr about uh, what she has done at this point. So why don't you go ahead? So I was saying I, I've reviewed the pleadings. I did leave a message for Ms. Cutbirth. I haven't heard back from her yet. Um, and I do not have contact for Mr. Peters or Ms. Kroll. So if you, if you if the two of you could please um, contact me, I don't have a phone number for either one um, of you. <clears throat> I just got your email yes or this morning. So okay. So if well, if you can get in contact with me as well, then we can move forward. Yeah, um, I was worried. Oh, oh, I was, what? I was worried about that because I didn't know if you had my number, and I was uh, tried called the courthouse to. I thought he said Lisa. I was trying to get a hold of you because I wasn't sure if you were contacting us or the other way around. Um, yeah, so here we are. Okay. <laughs> so we can all make contact this week, hopefully, and we can move forward. Um, well, I was going to say that um, me and all of us have kind of been able to talk over the last month since the last court hearing. And we were thinking Bruno's done good with his phone calls. I was hoping that as long as, and Shira agreed to do the UA, we talked about it. And as long as she could pass a UA, I'd be willing to kind of let this go and just have Bruno return to Shira. I think ultimately that's the goal anyway. I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, he's going to somebody who, just making sure she's clean. Other than that, I, I've been to her house. I know she has one, a place for him to go. So I don't know if that's a way to, if there's a way to expedite it, but I know that, Bruno's struggling with being kind of in limbo, if that makes sense. Sure. I, talk, I talked to Bruno last night and he was really expressing wanting to come back. And I had some good news. Like I live with a roommate now, but um, I have a friend who's a private landlord and he has a house available on uh, 20th. It's a two bedroom home, not an apartment. And I can move in today and tomorrow. That'd be pretty cool to have him, you know, help decorate it and set it up. You know, feel like it's really his home. It was really exciting news. <clears throat> um, he seemed really... Um, I don't know what the look. He seemed defeated yesterday. He didn't well, say anything either way about anything, but he just, like she I said, will, he's struggling with limbo. Well, I will say that yesterday when he was talking to you on the phone, I didn't get a chance to talk to you afterwards, but he was on his tablet while he was talking to you. So yeah. he was kind of just going, like, you would be like, is everything okay? I wasn't like in the room. I was kind of doing my own thing, but he was, you're like, is everything going okay? And he's like, well, I don't know. And he was kind of distracted on his tablet, if that makes sense. It's diff he, was, he seemed depressed. Yeah, yeah he, but the tablet. Yeah, he let me know. He's like, well, he has to be uh, go because he wanted to. He wanted to play on his tablet. It's his nice escape. Um, his kids love those tablets. Okay, but, let, um, me, let me let you know the court's position on these cases. This isn't the first time that somebody's come in and said, well, um, on second thought, or we've been talking and we think we just want to dismiss it. The issue, though, is the court has now essentially taking jurisdiction over this and so there needs to be some minimum work done to make sure okay. that bruno is going to be safe Bruno yeah, absolutely. Is, bruno's going to be yeah. safe in my home and nobody's come over to check it out i've been waiting for two three weeks now i catherine has been invited over i've tried to establish some sort of connection with her so she can see for herself how i'm doing nobody ever checked on me anytime at any point in time to see what i'm doing only assumed what i was doing, um, I'm, doing the, the, the I'm not doing anything i shouldn't be doing the person that needs to check on all that is miss far I know that's it's been I... three weeks and Bruno hasn't even seen me physically. He's seen me on the phone. That's this three weeks I could have been spending with my son. This is, it wasn't even necessary. If somebody just reached out to me to let me know Ms. that this was. Ms. Crawl, we're going to get to a place where we may dismiss this minor guardianship. I don't think being combative with me is going to be productive. I'm not trying to be combative. Right. I'm just trying to well, see my son. Well, you are being combative and, and it's not going to help your position. So I, I have an obligation to make sure that Bruno is going to be safe. Yeah. I know you feel you're you're in a safe place, but I need Ms. Farr to to look into that. So um, Ms. Cutbirth has requested that you do a UA. If you could do that in the next couple of days and get the result to Ms. Farr. So that would be next couple of days means by next Monday. Yeah. And then if both Mr. Peters and Ms. Kroll could um, contact Ms. Farr by tomorrow, hopefully, 
so that she can set up an interview, come and see where uh, you live, and then be able to report back to me. I will set the next hearing on May 25th, which is two weeks. And if everything looks good at that point, then we can consider dismissing this petition. And is there any, Bruno is there any way we can get physical visits? This is not fair to my son. This isn't fair to my son. That's the ultimate. He's wanting to see his mom. I haven't done anything at all. I'm not trying to sound combative. Everything I say, I feel like it's being taken with, wrong. With, this with happened last time too. If and I may, if I, I may for a I second, miss my kids. Please, All right, let's fairness, let Mr. Peter speak. Go ahead. In fairness to us, he was left with us eight months ago. Nobody told right her. Nobody told her to do that. She was struggling with substance issues. Are you kidding? And this is. I'm literally. That, I can't do that. This. Is why this, he is this, here right now. Cool. Just a minute. That I is why he see is my here son. right he now. He was with Nobody him, and there's no contact order. You, Miss Kroll, you need to remain quiet while Mr. Peter speaks. Right. So he was left here and she says, nobody let me see my son. I said, nothing prevented you from filing for rights through the courts. Besides nothing, trauma. Nothing Ms. prevented Carl, I'm going to mute you because you have a problem staying quiet. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Peter. And, and she, you know, all these things have happened and it's been a constant blame game and it's caused more problems for the child because he doesn't understand. And so he exhibits the same behavior because I have a mother that won't, she doesn't want to cooperate. It just, it's everyone else's fault. I didn't do any of this. I bear no responsibility. And it makes it really hard for the adults in the room to to handle situations that need to be handled correctly when she's just constant, just, it's constant. And and it, it's combative, like you said, like I, and it's that constant combativeness, that's what we're dealing with. And lack of responsibility for what she did. She was using narcotics in our home. I had to get a court order to ask her to leave. She became physically assaultive to me in her home, had to ask her to leave. She blames everyone. Anyone that doesn't, isn't buying the narrative that she's spinning, she gets mad at and says, you know, you're, you're against me and you never wanted me to have my child. Nobody told her to drop him off here. I said I would help take care of him, but I didn't say so you could go further your drug career or go out there and keep using while I had him in my care, which is what she did for four months. And only now does she want to get it together and everything, you know, is fine. And that's well and good. But we have a child here that's really been struggling because, you know, he needs to see adults coexisting and getting along and 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 have that kind of healthy, those healthy relationships in his lives. Thank you. Ms. Kroll, mm -hmm. if you want to unmute yourself, you may respond. There we go. This is, I don't, I'm having a really hard time with this. I, Brad, seeing Brad in court, this is, I'm not being dramatic. This is visible, this, these court cases, it's like our fifth one with no contact orders and lies. And he, I can't even, my heart starts racing. I don't want to see his face in court. I did I'm so bad that I didn't even contact anybody. This is traumatic for me. I'm, I have an intake appointment for counseling. This is ridiculous. I don't know how to say this and I'm not getting emotional about it. It's my children. This Brad Peters, our relationship was traumatic for me. I didn't use narcotics in the You're home ever. The only I had one. used a few times. Mr. Peters. And, no, I'm not using it all now. And well, the way he says stuff and you give him all this time to talk too, and you shut me down every time I talk. I don't know how to do this. I'm like if we should have a different judge or what, but I feel attacked. Nobody's seen my the way I live. Nobody's seen any of that. And you're believing everything they're saying and he's making faces. Did you see he wrote, I weighed 87 pounds on our court paperwork. Just that right there. It's abusive. I filed paperwork on him for course of control and intimate relationship and was supposed to file it again. And I didn't, I failed. I should have moved forward and had some backbone and I got scared and didn't. And now I'm in a position like this where he has everything over my head. I haven't seen my daughter. He took my home, everything. I lost my job and I'm not blaming everybody. It, that relationship was traumatic. And if I did everything he asked me to do, he would take me back in a heartbeat. He was never abused. I, one time I snapped after eight years and that a whole year went by and he filed again and you even denied his order. And then a, they got approved after five, six more days. It wasn't even changed. I couldn't even bring myself. Every time I thought about filling out paperwork, my heart starts racing and I panic. I don't want to be emotional. I just want to get to know my kids again and heal from this i'm i have a support system i have my job i can get back i have a place i can live everything i'm healthy for my son nothing ever said i wasn't our relationship he's making faces now our relationship was extremely toxic his sister even was uh, ran around me getting paperwork together and stuff and, and encouraged me it was an emergency situation to get this file and get him out of the home and i didn't do it because i could i didn't i couldn't i couldn't do that to our kids again and he did it before the drug use was even discovered, he was going to file it for abusing a vulnerable adult. And apparently he was a vulnerable adult I was abusing. And then that happened. And then he had a lot of ammunition. 
This isn't a thing where I'm just some deadbeat mom where I was running around using drugs instead of being home. I couldn't even be home because he'd fight with me every time I was home and harass me. I have police reports where even the kids wanted to call the cops. He was drunk harassing us. He, in the middle of the night, there's so many, there's like three or four police reports of it. I don't have all that paperwork together. And if I was more organized, I would, I couldn't. And I don't want to say I couldn't as in like, it's not possible. It's like, I couldn't do it. I like froze. This is just seeing this, all the screens and everything. It's, I'm not good in court and I'm not good at making things sound like a, like they are. And so they sound like they're not even a big deal. And I'm probably annoying and sound emotionally charged and com the combative part. I'm not trying to be, it's a serious situation for me. Are my children, you know, I don't left them here. I, sh I wish I would have got a lawyer. I can't afford that. I can't organize how, how to say this where it was going to get, you know, the goal I would like instead of frustrating the judge or having Brad make these faces. I don't even see why he's in court. Cadron came to my house saying that there was an emergency at the home and Bruno's been being harassed for the last uh, pretty much the whole time. And he's been treated like crap. Nobody right. told me any of that. Nobody reached out, messaged me on Facebook or anything and said, look, Bruno's having a really hard time. We can meet up and you can come get him. I can come see how you're living. Anything like that. I didn't know until she was serving me that Bruno was having that hard of a time. I figured me being out of the home and no fighting, it would be different. I never would have left him had I thought that. And I definitely didn't want to be gone this long. I miss my home and my children. I had a whole life. It's, this isn't what I want. And I definitely am not using drugs. I'm pregnant. I'm about almost four and a half months pregnant. It's not my favorite thing right now. I want to focus on my kids, but you know, sometimes things are a blessing and uh, <clears throat> I'm just doing the best I can. I don't know. Can I take some time? I'm to good at court. All right, Ms. Kroll, I'm going to let Ms. Cutbert uh, address the court. Go ahead, Ms. Cutbert. That's fine. Hi. Um, so what I would like to say is that um, Bruno putting the focus, I want to put focus on that. So Bruno has, always struggled. We as a family have always known about Bruno's struggles. Um, I know that um, Miss Crawl did file paperwork against Mr. Peters. I don't like using that. Okay. Shira filed, sorry, Shira filed paperwork against Brad. And I did, I did encourage her and I helped her through that. And she made the decision to drop that. And that was her decision to do. She made the decision to drop Bruno off with Brad. That was her decision as well. Um, and I'm not saying right, wrong or indifferent. I'm just saying that those are her decisions that she made. And what I'm trying to do personally with Bruno is support him and help him as a child. He's 10 years old. He's got obviously a lot of trauma around all of this. This entire situation has been very traumatic for him. Um, he has expressed that he wants to see his mom. I wouldn't be against helping them facilitate a visit. I can't, I do live a very busy life. I have my own children and my own schooling and things like that, but I would be willing to help facilitate visits. I don't think that it really matters all the extra stuff, but I will say that um, I I personally don't take responsibility for checking in on people when they're, you know, doing whatever they're doing. I mean, the phone rings both ways and um, I didn't not check on Shira. I just lived my life. So I wasn't, this is kind of aside from the point to me in, in my opinion right now, we're here for Bruno. So um, what I want to see is reunification between Bruno and Shira in a way that's healthy. And it sounds like we're heading in that direction with Sherry helping to make sure that the situation is healthy for him. I think that that's exactly what needs to happen. I'm totally fine with um, facilitating maybe a once a week visit. I think that it would be important that there are um, that it's written out kind of specific as far as how the visit should go, just so that there's no room for wiggling. That way it's not to us any more stressful than it has to be, if that makes sense. Um, I'd even be willing to do the visits. If Shira's getting a house, I'd be willing to bring Bruno over there and let him visit and see his room. And I think that that would be really healthy for him as long as she's clean and doing what she's doing. And I'm not doubting that she is. I'm just saying, I can't assume that she's not, I can't assume either way, I guess, if that makes sense. Just the same as I'm kind of taking the same position as the courts. It's really just about making sure that whatever's going on, Bruno's safe. I don't assume that Shira's using, I just can't assume that she's not too, I think. That's just how I feel about it. All right, I appreciate everybody's comments. I need some uh, additional investigation by Ms. Farr before I'm gonna be comfortable <clears throat> with in-person visits. Okay. Uh, apparently there's um, video or telephone that is going on now and that should continue. Okay, um, I can't I see my son not between now and May 25th 
when we're going to come back. That's a, two more weeks. That is two more weeks. That's a long yeah. time. Well, it's the time necessary for oh, Ms. Farr to advise the court uh, as to what's in the best interest of um, Bruno. And I need- His interest would be seeing his mom. I haven't done anything at all to say I'm a bad mom. And, and if you recall the last court date, you saw Brad and I together. He had said clearly, Bruno's always welcome in the home. And if Sherry needs any time to sort herself out, that I'm here for him. And she could take as much time as she needs. Ms. Mr. Peters, don't don't respond. This isn't like, and Bruno would stop eating. He didn't want to take a shower. He didn't want to eat. He didn't want to be in other people's homes. He, I, and he wanted to see his brother and he wanted to see his sisters. Ms. That's the only reason I took him home. I made a decision after listening to everybody. I made a decision that I believe is in the best interest of Bruno. And um, that's what can I'm going to Can we request a different judge for the next hearing? I don't feel like you even, like you get the smug look on your face. Like you don't even like me. And you think I'm, I don't even know what it is. And he's going off to laugh. I really feel uncomfortable. Well, after the last court date and you, you already had denied the same exact order and then you approved it. This said a whole thing. I have trauma with foster care. I have tra like court. This is not, this is something that is a deep seated trauma, traumatic thing for me. It's showing up in family court type stuff. It's never, it's, I don't even understand it all the way. And then to be like, if I may, your honor and Ms. Really Kroll, Ms. Kroll, with me here. If, if everyone, if all three of you would call me as soon as this hearing is over. So I have phone numbers for everybody. We can get this moving forward as quickly as possible. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. That's the best way to go forward at this point. All right. So we'll see everybody back here on May 25th at uh, 1030. And um, his birthday is on the 21st. We'll be back here on May 25th at 10. His birthday is on the 21st. Okay. Thank Do I get you, to see my son at least on his birthday? That's um, I need a report from this far. But that's what his birthday is. He only gets one. One 11th birthday. There's no reason why I shouldn't see him. At least on his freaking birthday. All right, Miss Miss Crawl, we're done here. Thank that's you. pretty I'll ugly. See you in two I want a different judge for my next hearing. How do I go about doing that? I'm not kidding. This isn't even... You're not able to get one because why? Because I made a discretionary. I don't feel like you're being case. impartial. I think that you have a feeling about me, and I don't. I'm not comfortable with this. Well, his birthday, you would. That's like not even. I deserve. He deserves to see his mom, and I deserve to see him. All right. Um, again, I made my ruling. Um, so that's we, in the best interest of Bruno not seeing his mom on his birthday. Is the best interest is what you feel? I, I want a different hear, judge. I need to I'm hear not from kidding. this far. And I'm not trying to be combative. What? I'm sorry. What was the date again? May 25th, 24th? at 10:30, and his birthday is the 21st. May 25th at 10:30. Okay, thank you. We'll be back here then. All right, thank you. That's How it. do I proceed with getting a different judge? I know there has to be a way. I can't advise you on that. And this only annoyed you more, so you're not going to be partial at all. You're probably just going to grant guardianship. I don't want this. You, Shira, I'm not. I would have passed the UA on Monday, and it would have been dropped. We're we're going to be back on the twenty fifth. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to end the. And I know uh, Ms. Crawl is here. Mr. Mm -hmm. Peters is here, and uh, Ms. Cutbert is here. Um, I need to. There we go. So, um, Ms. Farr, uh, I ordered Ms. Crawl to do a UA uh, last time we were here. Did she provide any to you? No, Your Honor, and, and I did receive a. Um, a, a note from Performance Occupational Health that on May 12th, uh, mom went in to do a drug test. However, she had something shaped like a bottle in her pants and refused to take it out. So I believe that the court um, counts that as a positive. Um, and that mom has communicated with me uh, just recently, I believe yesterday, that she is unable to pay for a drug test. And that's why she hasn't gone back to get one done. Uh, the next question is, um, I had um, ordered telephone or video visits twice a week. Have those been occurring? Um, Ms. Cutler? Um, Yeah, for the most part, it's been a little bit. We've I've tried to work with her and she's tried to work with me. I'd admit that there's times when, you know, I haven't been available on the days that we scheduled. Um, yesterday, she was supposed to have a phone call. She didn't call. Not I don't really know what happened with that. She didn't message me. I haven't heard from her. Um, I attempted to give her a phone call on her son's on Bruno's birthday that didn't work out I talked to her but we kind of got into it and I ended up blocking her on Facebook but she does have my cell phone number and has contacted me since then on my cell phone so I don't really know what happened with yesterday's phone call um 
there have been times where I haven't been available for a phone call, but I've also made it so that we make up the phone call later or on a different or the next day or whatever. Um, it's been kind of a little bit iffy and weird, but most, I mean, somewhat successful too. Bruno has had some contact with her. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Peters, any comment? I, um, I, I think that me and my sister's goal here is to protect Bruno, um, from any kind of, um, imbalance in his life or having to be, um, drugged through the system in any kind of way, but we are, we are facing challenges with him. Um, both of us, we, I know my sister has a lot of her own personal things that have come up in her life that she's dealing with that are a separate issue. And it's made it very challenging for her. And, um, you know, I will say she, she has been awesome in this, in this process of helping with, with Bruno. And, um, I, I think that we're kind of both at a place where we don't really know what to do. His behaviors have reached in an extreme to the point of like, um, it's, it's causing, it's, it's very stressful is what I can say. And we are trying to combat these behaviors the best that we can, but, um, I think that he's acting out more because he, this has had a great effect on him and he is, um, trying to find some normalcy in all of this. And, um, it's just been very difficult. I know that he does really want to see his mother a lot. And, um, you know, I, I heard today that, you know, being clean and sober isn't enough. And I got to agree with that statement. I think that it, it's so much more than that, what he needs. And, um, I would ultimately like to see him and his mother reunited. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I, I'm just here taking care of him and being his dad as I always have been. And no matter what the circumstances of my life are, I will continue to try to do everything I can to help this child. Uh, I have other, I have two daughters in my home and his sister, um, his biological sister, Jocelyn, who's not just almost eight years old. And, um, she gets kind of scared sometimes when he acts out in the home and, um, I want to make sure that everybody feels okay. Um, and, and make sure that everyone's needs are getting met. Um, I, I had thought today about suggesting, um, holding this over and, and filing for temporary guardianship myself. Cause my sister just can't do it anymore. And, and given a timeline of when he can be reunited with Miss Kroll. But I would, I would have to know some sort of timeline. Ms. Cutberth, is that uh, accurate that you're feeling overwhelmed with this? Yes, um, I have, like he said, I did have some stuff come up this week that was unforeseen to me before now, obviously, and it's a major family stuff. And so I really am overwhelmed with this because I have, now I have other stuff that is involving my, my children and my husband and my immediate family. And so it's kind of become a lot for me. Um, I think that Brad taking guardianship over Bruno might be a good thing. And I'm willing to help Brad in that endeavor um, and support him through it. It's just that I need to be more of a support rather than the main um, person, if that makes sense. All right. Ms. Crawl, um, do you want to first address what happened with the UA and then um, tell me your thoughts on the telephone visits. Yeah, I overthought the UA and uh, I started thinking about marijuana being a problem because I'm pregnant and I went to actually fake my UA. And then I went back and uh, went to go get pay for one that was uh, the UA and watched so that they'd see me <clears throat> and that marijuana is going to be in my system. And I did my ID and I went back. I went to the place probably six times all year and um, I, a friend was going to pay for the UA and then he wasn't going to, and it just became a big thing. And um, I have an intake today at two for outpatient services and the Phoenix house has openings and um, I'm going to be enrolling back in PCAP to have extra support just because the behavior behind trying to uh, cover up is sneaky behavior. And uh, there's a lot I can learn from going another round of outpatient. I'm Bruno's perfectly suitable to be where I'm at. Um, I'm willing to do, I don't, if there's a possibility to do UAs somewhere that's, uh, no cost to me, it would be easier because it's very expensive. And, uh, 
from what I heard that neither one of them can do this with uh, Bruno and Bruno's very unhappy. He can't speak freely when I talk to him about it. And, uh, and honestly, yesterday I thought, oh, oh. Ms. Kral, do you want to go on? Um, I don't know what happened with Ms. Kral, but I will say that um, I don't know if I'm able to speak right now or if we're waiting for Ms. Kral. Uh, you can go ahead. I just wanted to say that Bruno is not unhappy. I don't think that that's fair to say. I think he definitely wants to see his mom, and he's unhappy when he's being disciplined because um, that is that is the main cause of the issues with Bruno is um, that that where we're struggling with his behaviors is around disciplinary action. So if he's asked to go and take a breather and decompress, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to continue. He and, and I have him enrolled in counseling services to help with that. We're kind of addressing some anger issues. He's saying that he has a really hard time controlling his anger. And so those are things that I'm working with him through counseling on. I don't think it's fair to say that he's unhappy. He's very happy on a regular basis. I think there have been times when Shira had phone calls with him where he was in an elevated state. And so he maybe seemed unhappy, but that's because he wasn't listening and he wasn't sitting on the, he wasn't doing what he was asked to do. Um, I think that he, um, hold on. I'm sorry. Just one moment. Sorry, my son came to my door. My toddler wanted me. Um, um, before you go on, I want to note that it looks like uh, Ms. Kroll uh, left the meeting. I'm not sure why, oh. um, but I, I do want to continue this discussion. So um, okay. I, I understand your comment is uh, he's not unhappy. So, Mr. Peters, it sounds like your intent would be to file for minor guardianship yourself at this point. Yeah, um, but like I said, I want to create some sort of timeline with it if we can. Um, where Timeline every, where... Miss um, Curl's right. getting the things done that she needs to get done because, honestly, this is exhausting for everybody. We have, <laughs> we have overextended and exerted ourselves to a level that it, it, it's just like he's not... He is just has started counseling like a month ago, but when he has anger outbursts in the house, they affect everyone. And yeah. I have other children to worry about their safety. And he has expressed things like, I want to kill myself and I want to kill you. And I have to be, I how have old, other children to he think now? about. He is, he is 11. Okay. Well, Ms. Kroll just indicated that she went to do UA and tried to fake it. Um, well, she, based on based on that, I'd say we're probably about a, at least a year away from her getting to a point where she can take him full time. Yeah. Is, is that a commitment you're willing to make? At this time, I, I honestly, the most honest answer I can give you is I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I think that's the consideration you may need to look at. And it sounds like Ms. Cutbirth, you're not able to see yourself going forward with this i i can't with everything that i have going on it's looking like i'm i i have a lot of family stuff but i am willing to if we can even do a continuance where brad has a chance to kind of think about it and really you know we talk about the solutions because there are solutions with bruno it's not just he's not just a bad kid he's no. just got a lot of stuff and i think yeah. that some of those solutions include kind of figuring out um, some of his medical stuff. He has an appointment in July. I want to get him tested for some um, serious medical issues that his mom's never really been willing to address. And so I think that like, if we are able to address some of that stuff and maybe get him the help that he really truly needs, I think that that would benefit and make it a lot easier to manage Bruno. I think that um, he has these anger outbursts and he has these big feelings and he doesn't even have control over it sometimes. Yeah. And yep. I think that that's a big issue. Um, I do feel as though um, if those weren't as, if, if we were able to get some of his medical concerns under control, I do think that um, it would be, a, it, that he would be manageable. Cause when he's good, he's really great. He's such yeah. a sweet boy. And like yeah. right now he's, he's totally accepting his he's gotten in trouble at school and so he's home today and he's just down at the table doing schoolwork like he's doing what he needs to do so some days it works but it's just a matter of him being dealt with the way he needs to be dealt with i think that being out of school over the summer is going to make things easier on him too 
he's having a lot of problems at school and that's been a big struggle for him. So I think that some of that is going like, there's a lot of factors to it, but I think that if we had time, at least just even a couple of weeks, a week or two to really talk about and discuss what we're going to be able to do moving forward, I think that that would be very beneficial. All right. I want to hear from Ms. Farr, who's been listening to this conversation and any, any thoughts from you? uh, Your Honor, I think, um, you know, what Ms. Um, Cutworth is saying that he probably needs to, to be evaluated by a medical doctor for certain things and medicated if necessary. And though, and it would be, it would help with his behavioral issues. Um, I think he's got things that have not ever been addressed that need to be addressed. Um, and there, there may be some other options that the family can explore uh, through the state, getting help through other services uh, to get him some the help that he needs. Um, my concerns with mom are that I, I don't believe she is stable. And um, I, I would agree with you that we're prob- probably several months uh, to a year out from her proving herself to be um, able and to to maybe parent at that time. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, I can try to help this family um, give, give them some options that they can look into for other services through the state. Um, to get him some, to get Bruno some the help that he needs, um, whether that means staying in their home or being removed and placed elsewhere, I don't know. But we can we can look into what all of those things might be. What I'd like to do is put this out to June twenty second. Okay. And um, during that time, I'm going to extend the immediate emergency minor guardianship and leave Ms. Cutbirth um, the guardian during that okay. time. Um, if Mr. Peters decides that uh, he's willing to petition, you need to get that petition in and hopefully get a hearing set on June 22nd also. Uh, but at a minimum, show up on June 22nd and let me know that that's in the works. And then yes, uh, Ms. Farr and uh, we'll be in touch with both of you. Um, certainly as part of any order that I enter, um, I can create a uh requirements for ms crawl to uh, meet before um there's visitation and and uh, and eventually where she can have custody um, yeah. i guess the issue is if if she uh doesn't meet those requirements then where do we go from there yeah but, uh, yeah. but i'm we certainly can enter an order like that uh, um so your honor i have one more question if i may sure what um and I'm not saying that, uh, you know, she should be unsupervised with him right now because I don't think that would be a good thing. But what is the possibility of her getting some supervised visits with her son? And what? Uh, did that? I, I um, well, I'm not sure that I'm ready to order that right now. I think okay. um, I want um, some input from this far. What I understand is she at one point came to you with um, Bruno and said, you take care of him. And that oh, was she didn't like, even come to me. She just dropped him off on my doorstep with a note. Okay. So that happened. And there was, it sounds like from the file, eight months where she had no contact with him. Correct. And he's 11. He wants to have contact, but we may need to have a special kind of counseling between the two of them yes. um, to um, reestablish that. Sure. And I, I'm, um, I need more input from Ms. Far. Let me tell you, she's in the waiting room. So I want to um, admit her. Sure. Okay. Good. It looks like it. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, sorry about that. My phone died. Okay. Good. I'm glad you're back. Yeah, that was stressful. Okay. So your your honor, so Miss Crawl was indicating that she has an appointment for outpatient services. Um, you know, and if she is accepted into that, they, then she'll be able to get UAs through them. Um, without paying privately, I believe her insurance should cover that at that point. But I also think that she, you know, needs to go through those services, get her the counseling she needs before you can, before we could even look at reunification counseling. Can I finish talking? Um, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, and I apologize last week for my outburst, pretty much an outburst. Uh, that wasn't very fair and I'm not really very good at court. Um, is there any way we can just continue this? I want to uh, get in contact with PCAP and Jamie and have extra support. I don't feel like this is going in a way that um, 
it needs to be going. Bruno's behaviors and his, this is way too important for me to be doing on my own. I'm not very, I'm just not good at it at all in court. I'm a lot of emotionally charged with it. Um, very frustrated. I'm not getting along with, uh, I'm just, it's, it's really hard. I and was, my son's been suffering and I can't do anything at all to help him or reach out or be supportive other than phone calls. Yesterday, I thought it was, I thought today's Wednesday. <laughs> um, ma'am, yeah. be, before you uh, log back on, I had indicated I was going to continue this to June oh, okay. 22nd. Um, uh, is there any way that we can do uh, in-person visits and have it supervised by um, somebody? It could be, I don't know right offhand in a second. I just don't feel very prepared. I should this is just a sorry my heart's like racing and i don't so i do need um some direction from the guardian ad litem um i do need i haven't some, got a chance to talk to her all the way i do need I thought, some result from a, a ua drug test yeah um I, I'm as far as right if you're going into outpatient in the next week they will take care of that. And so you'll be able to provide those. And, yeah, and that's, that's, I'm going to need that before I can make a decision about supervised visitation. And, uh, um, this is just, it's really damaging for him. He feels like he doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have a home or a place. He doesn't have any space at Caterins. He's not, Brad's indicated he's just a girl dad. He, uh, he said, or I've heard he wants to, he can have guardianship until um, we figure out where Bruno's going with me. And uh, I just like my heart. I just, I want to reach out to him. I can't do anything for him. And there's been no, I don't even know what to say. Like, well, I, I do want you to know that both Mr. Peters and Ms. Cutberth um, are in favor of visitations with you. Um, but I need um, additional information before I'm comfortable. So um, if you're going to be, upset anybody you can be upset at me and i i'm gonna have to leave the telephone calls and video visits in place until june 22nd hopefully we know a lot more on june 22nd and we can um make um provisions for visitation at that time okay um, i don't understand I'm, this i've never been nothing's ever been proven at all and it's just the kids are just suffering i'm i'm suffering yeah. My son's struggling and I can't do anything for him. I don't know if I can ease her mind by saying that, like, Bruno's not suffering. Bruno no. is struggling. He's suffering. With... If it makes you look bad, I'm sorry, but he's suffering. He can't, he's not at home anywhere. He has no space at all at your house. He does no actually space. have his right. home let's, room. Let's not talk to him. You want to hear that, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I do want to know what I can do for Bruno in regards to, I am very careful not to talk to him about anything going on with this court case, but every time he gets mad, he says, you're not letting me see mom. This is all your fault. So I don't really know how to communicate with him. And I just tell him, no, you know, buddy, there's, there's court system in place that's, um, preventing that right now and that I'm doing my best to kind of well you, uh, you can tell them that's what the that. judge ordered at this point okay okay, okay. I'll just well, yeah that's kind of what I've been saying but I'll keep why keep can't I see him there's no proof at all I, if I had a lawyer this wouldn't go be going this way I feel like I'm being ran over all right I I think um we've discussed this um and I'm going to put it over to June 22nd I hope everybody's in touch with Ms. Farr um, I, I would like to consider, um, some type of visitation on June 2nd. Okay. Thank you. Right. Oh, June, June 22nd, right? Not June, June 2nd. I, I'm sorry. June 22nd. If I miss okay. that's okay. I just wanted to double make sure. All right. That's then a, then a Thursday at 1030 on zoom. Just like today. Yeah. Your honor. I, I don't want to eat up any more of the court's time, but I would like to say one last thing too on Bruno has a bedroom here at his home that he's always had with all of his toys. And he, well, we have normal family that. life. We have, uh, we have normal family life and do normal family activities when he is here. Oh, no, the I biggest issue, the biggest issue that Bruno no, no, is struggling um, with. Mr. Yeah, I, I, Mr. Peters, I, your comments are just making I things. Can't listen to, I can't, there's a so, lot of trauma okay. revolving around okay. me and Brad. I can't we're, do this before and listen to Brad okay. every single time. I just can't do it. We're okay. We'll see everybody back on June 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Is with Isaac Kirkpat the name Isaac Kirkpatrick? That's what we're noticing. I'm, I'm, 
I'm not sure why she's not responding, but so last time we were here, uh, let me start with Ms. Cutberth. Um, you indicated that you did not want to continue as the guardian. Is that still your position today? Yes. Um, I love him and he's a sweet boy. I, he's got a lot of stuff and I have five kids and it's just not working in our house, but, um, I did help me and Brad work together to get his paperwork done. Um, when we went in to file it, they told us that it would be a whole new case and that we would have to pay the filing fee and all the things. I thought that it was just filling out, a a new petition and just turning it in to have you look it over. But the court or the people at the courthouse told me that I couldn't do that. Okay. So were you able to file it or you have to come up with the filing fee? No, we weren't able to file it. We didn't have the filing fee. I didn't realize that we would have to do all that. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Peters, um, given what you ran into in the clerk's office, what, what's your position of filing at this point? I would like to file for guardianship, but we're, we're going to need a little more time. Um, Bruno's safe right now between me and Cage and Cage and still um, helping with certain things, but um we feel like we've got him on in a direction that's a lot more positive. He's being seen by his counselor and he saw his doctor yesterday and we've got some medication going. Um, so we've been able to, you know, combine our efforts and still continue to care for Bruno. And I don't have a problem. I would very much like to take over the guardianship role until his mom can get a few things in place. Now I, I um, have heard that his mother did, does have a treatment intake and that she is going to go and do an outpatient assessment and that she is currently in counseling. Um, I'm, I hope these things are true because that's definitely steps in the right direction. And I would very much like at some point to work with mom, get some things taken care of. And, you know, eventually have her functioning in the children's lives. To get back <laughs> to lives. That's the goal. Has there been any contact uh, since we were last together? With this crawl? Um, no, not to me. No, okay. I, 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 I've just heard. Um, mutual friends. She's had a couple of phone calls with the kids. I don't think she's oh. had very much success with um, trying to stay on a schedule with them, but I know that she's had a few of the... I know, I know that she's had contact with um, Bruno I, I think I think maybe twice, right? Brad, you would know better how many times um, has Kyra... No, I think more times than that, but I think um, I think maybe three or four times, but I... I know that um, uh, very little, but from what I do understand, she is trying to stabilize her situation and get back on her feet and make some better decisions. So um, I know that this time has been really challenging for her. I do believe she is on the path to making better decisions and getting some things done. And I know that those things can be challenging when you're trying to, when you, you know, made choices and your life's kind of out of order and you're trying to get it back together. So um, I do believe she's trying. Ms. Farr, uh, have you had any contact with the parties here? No, Your Honor, I haven't had contact with any of the parties since the last hearing. I, I, I did not know that... Uh, there was a doctor visit or medications uh, prescribed. I didn't, this is all new information. Um, the doctor visit was just yesterday. So what happened specifically is that Bruno did have kind of a, um, I want to, I want to, he had an issue where he was um, doing threats of suicide 
and feeling kind of overwhelmed with his emotions, we got, um, Brad got um, emergency services um, brought to the home so that Bruno could speak with them about how he was feeling. He said he wasn't suicidal. He was just upset and that, you know, he was safe and happy or not happy, but you know what I mean? He's safe and he knows that he's in a good place. He, um, after that visit, he, they left and he ended up having another issue. Um, I took him to the hospital because, um, that's what they had suggested that we do. If he had mentioned suicide again, I took him to the hospital. He, um, was evaluated by a doctor and a social worker. They determined that he wasn't suicidal, that he just has big feelings and that he um, was very low risk and that he didn't need outpatient at, or inpatient at the time that they could just do intensive outpatient. So I brought him home. Um, they scheduled him an appointment just like a day later or two days later with his primary, which he already needed to see her for um, a well child check. So he did see the primary, the medication that she prescribed is very, um, non-invasive. It's, it's really, she said that she wants him to see a psychiatrist to get an actual diagnosis before there's any medications really prescribed, but the medication that she did prescribe, I can't remember what it's called because I just found out about it yesterday, but it's, um, it's really just a medication that kind of the way the doctor explained it is that it takes him from if he's in the green zone instead of jumping right to the red zone where he, his whole world is on fire. It gives him, um, him an opportunity to be in that yellow zone where he can think things through. It just gives him time to think, basically, it, and it makes it easier for him to process through his emotions or gives him more time to process. He's on a very, very low dose of it right now. When do you think you'll have your petition filed, Mr. Peters? Um, I would say that I could have it done within it's Wednesday today. I, I would like to say by early next week, I could get something before the court. If I have to file a whole new order and what they're talking about. And I mean, it does take time and between Cajun and I, I know that we could probably figure it out. Our schedules are kind of busy as we are always dealing with the kids. So um, I would like to say that I could have something done by early next week. Okay. Ms. Crawl, are, are you able to hear us? I'm gonna put this over three weeks to July 13th. I want everybody to be back on that date. Uh, hopefully the new petition will be filed. And uh, if it's not before me, I, I'll at least be able to look at it. Um, uh, on the uh, resources we have. And uh, Ms. Cutbirth, are you okay being involved? Uh, at least three more weeks. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I'm Brad. Brad has been helping a lot with Bruno. And honestly, he, he has him. I'm just, I try to just check in and things like that. But if anything major happens, I tend to take the reins just cause I feel like that's my responsibility, but he does better over at Brad's than he does at my house sometimes. And sometimes he does better over there, over here than he does there. So we're kind of, we're not ping ponging him, but we're, we're doing kind of what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, Miss Farr, I'd like you to um, stay involved in this case. And uh, uh, if we could be back in three weeks, then um, I'll extend the immediate emergency minor guardianship until uh, the 13th. Um, and then we'll have... go for it. Go I ahead. Two questions. Um, should Brad file the immediate order? Should he just, could he just skip and go straight to guardianship? I know that uh, mom, 
may have expressed um, possibly being interested in just kind of allowing that or something. If she was willing, would we should we just file that instead? Uh, if she was willing and would um, sign a consent, then you could go straight to a guardianship. Okay, is it cons consent through the courts, like a form through the courts, or is that just a you, written consent? If you go to Washington court forms under mm -hmm. um, guardianships, I think there's a, a form in there that you can print off. Okay, perfect. And then for future medical stuff, um, do I, I, I apologize if I was supposed to contact Sherry. I wasn't sure. So if I need to, I will, though. I don't know if that's something. Um, that between now and, and uh, when we come back on the 13th, I think if there is any medical going on, you should probably let her know. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Guardianship of Brunswick Swaronson. Cause number 23400013608. Uh, anyone here in the matter of Brunswick Swaronson? Yes, Your Honor. Or my sister, um, who is the current, current guardian of Brunswick, is trying to get on right now. I am his stepfather, I guess you could say. I been with him since he was 18 months old okay well if you know she's trying to get on then i'm just gonna wait one moment then okay and sure. i'll call a different case just give me one second here yeah. thank you all right and then i have brunswick swaronson Twenty three four zero zero one three six zero eight. All right. And um, is it Cutbirth? Am I saying your last name correctly? Yes. Okay. My first Thank name you. is Cadron. Cadron. All right. That's a neat name. Okay. And then Mr. Peters is here on this matter as well. Yes, Your Honor. And um, Ms. Farr is here. So, okay. This is what I gathered from my review of the record. Uh, Miss uh, Cutbirth was essentially wanting to switch to withdraw from uh, the guardianship as primary custodian, and Mr. Peters was going to step in as primary custodian and file uh, a petition. Yes. Yes. I see that, and so I saw that there was a review on the 22nd in front of uh, Commissioner Nelson. It was set over today for uh, Ms. Cutbirth to file her uh, petition to terminate and for Mr. Uh, Peters to sign or to file his uh, motion to become custodian. And I have the termination petition for Ms. Cutbirth. I have nothing from Mr. Peters. The uh, commissioner actually set it over for the 16th. And then I went ahead and filed paperwork instead. Um, the issue being that I was not able to serve Ms. Kroll um, for this specific, for the relinquishment. It was actually set over for next week, though. Um, okay, I see that. You're correct. So Mr. Peters has until next thir the 13th. Okay. There was a petition filed this morning. It went in. I, I tried to get it done yesterday. I got the waiver of deferral fees done yesterday, but the actual petition for emergency guardianship was filed this morning. We do have a case number on that. Okay. Yeah. The case number is 2340012. Um, that, yeah, that okay. all did happen. I am willing to wait until next Thursday for the 16th for court. That way it would give time for the paperwork to be kind of put into circulation. And that way Bruno doesn't have to go through any foster care systems. I don't want to see that happening with him. Okay. And it, it, it appeared that there were some 
concerns with you working with Mr. Peters and Mr. Peter Peters working with you? Are you guys uh, going to be fine over the next we, week? We yeah. we have resolved that issue. It was a big misunderstanding. Um, Good. my okay. biggest concerns. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. One Your biggest concern is that um we can't find Chira to serve her. She is currently she has a warrant out for her arrest. Um, from my understanding, I just found out about that like this morning. Um, but, uh, we can't find her to serve her. She has gone MIA. We, I tried calling her even on her cell phone and I told her I needed to have her served with paperwork and she said she would meet up with me and then she never did. And her phone, I don't know if it's disconnected. I haven't been able to contact her on her phone number or anything. I do have an email for her. I just don't know if I'm allowed, we're allowed to serve paperwork through email. Okay. I mean, I know we are, but I know we have to have permission from her, but okay. I can't okay. contact her to serve her. All right. Uh, Ms. Farr, any yes, your you know, way in here? Yes, Your Honor. So if if um, Mr. Peters is granted the emergency guardianship, which I would assume he would be, I haven't seen the paperwork, I don't know what reasons were put down, but if he is um, granted the emergency guardianship, then I will uh, help and I'm appointed to that, which I'm assuming I would transition over into that case, then I would help him with service um, as the court is aware there are different options and I would go over what those options are with him at that time. Um, I didn't know that the parties had resolved the issues um, between them between them, and are now getting along well enough to help Bruno um, for another week. So I think that that's fine if that is accurate information. Um, and then, you know, hopefully the court approves the emergency guardianship today for Mr. Peters so that Bruno can be protected. I do think that if we filed it today, it's five court days. So that would be next Tuesday. We go to court again before the 16th, or would we just go to court on the 16th? I don't know what you filed. So I don't, if you, oh. I don't know what, nobody has sent me copies of anything. I don't know. It was it for an immediate. Yeah. It was order. just an immediate order for um, emergency temporary guardianship. The and the criminal history was done and and submitted with that paperwork too. Okay. Um, here's what um, Madam Clerk, is there is there a possibility since this matter's um, set for the 16th with next sorry, the 13th, next Thursday. Um, is is there a possibility if that paperwork comes through, we can um, set it for the 13th, so we can kind of try to deal with everything at once, regardless of, of service at this point? I think we can. I d I'm under the impression, though, that the um, emergency order already went back ex parte, so it might be in a judge's hands currently. Okay. But if you want, I can I can try to look for it and put that date on there. I will, um, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to, I'll go check the the box that that stuff comes back to us in um, and try to grab it if it's there. And it, it, assuming both parties, I understand the service um, and I can't unfortunately give you legal advice on the service. There are, uh, but it sounds like maybe if you contacted Ms. Farr, she has some information for you. Um, but I'll try to look through that and sound, if Mr. Peters and Ms. Cutbirth don't have an issue with um, trying to get the newly filed case onto the 13th uh, for at least its first uh, first time in court to uh, at that point in time, then I'll try to make that happen and find out, find that order wherever it is this morning. Okay. Yes, that's fine. I, I, uh, and if I may, um, they, we waited to get copies until we just, until we, uh, they had made a decision on signing it or not. And so when we get those copies, we'll have those copies made if we go pick it up and it's signed and then make sure we get that stuff to Miss Far right away. Please, that's super important. So I appreciate sure. that. Sure, of course. 
that way I can make sure that the proper orders are before the court for sure. next week. And I, yeah. And I apologize. We're balancing like busy, busy schedules. And I know that's everybody. And I, I just, we, you know, we run, we did what we needed to do and, and it was all filled out correctly and all the, everything done the right way. So and when I, I appreciate and I just, your time. I, I appreciate the, um, that you guys, A, have worked out your problems, B, that you're um, trying to help this little guy that, that Absolutely. Needs, needs the help. And I lastly understand how difficult it can be for non-attorneys to try to wade through this process. Uh, I will just kind of, again, say Ms. Farr is an amazing resource uh, to have and any questions or concerns, she should probably be one of the first points of contact because sure. she, if she doesn't have the answer, she knows how to point you where you, where you can get the answer. Excellent. Right. Okay. And okay. I don't, how, I'm, I'm sorry. One last thing is I don't know about service for Shira, but I know that she is aware and was in court on our last court appearance. So she does know that we have court on the 16th. That is something she's aware of. So. And there hasn't been any phone calls, nothing, nothing coming through for Bruno. No contact. Okay. Okay. Well then um, by agreement, it sounds like we'll set this to uh, the 13th at 1030. Uh, get the copies. I'll find the paperwork. Um, we'll get the date set for the 13th. And um, please make sure you get Ms. Farr copies of everything. Absolutely. Sure. And can I ask one more question, Your Honor? Sure. Um, so, will they would they still call me today to come pick up the paperwork if it's signed and done, or will I just wait until we have court on the thirteenth? That's now. a. I'm going to ask the clerk. I'm assuming that they let you know once you can pick okay. up. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that correct, uh, Rhiannon? It is correct. Okay. Okay. So yes, you'll still get a phone call. Okay. So, Great. Your Honor, it sounds just for clarification, it sounds like you're. Um, not that you don't want the immediate order put in place, that you just want it to be heard on the 13th for the petition to replace for the emergency guardianship. That's a good question, because if I sign the order as an emergency uh, minor guardianship, that essentially then we have potentially complete com competing orders uh, with Ms. Cutbirth, and we haven't fully kind of close the loop. So um, I'm going to look at the paperwork and what I'm going to do since we already do have uh, a guardianship in place. And it sounds like Ms. Cutbirth is good for the next week. Um, I'll probably just set it for review on the 13th and not sign off on that immediate um, minor guardianship, Mr. Peters. And that's not me denying it. It's just delaying it just so we can sure, handle sure. everything at once. Understood. Thank you. Okay. And Thank I'm you sorry. for bringing that up, Ms. Farr. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You yes. will also have to sign an order extending Ms. Cutbirth's until that date today. Oh, she's actually already extended oh, no. the thirteenth. Yeah, it is extended through the thirteenth. Oh, okay. Thank Perfect. you. All right, um, I will uh, go track down that order, and then we'll see you all back on the thirteenth at ten thirty. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Your Thank Honor. you. Good luck. Yeah. All right, I believe that concludes. We have parties appearing on that matter. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, thank you, sir. Anyone else appearing on that matter? Yes. All right. I'm here for you. <laughs> All right. I see you there, ma'am. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, there was a motion filed to um, end the guardianship. And let me pull up that. Hmm. And so, um, all right. And I see you there, Mr. Peters. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Peters, I'll let you go first. Um, okay, well, I believe we filed the motion for emergency guardianship to transfer that guardianship from my sister back to me. Um, and then all the other paperwork that needs to be filed for the permanent guardianship is done and will be f submitted today. Okay. Um, and Ms. Farr, are you working on that matter as well? Well, I haven't been appointed to it, but I would assume that I would be. Um, so I will need an order appointing guardian at litem on that one. Um, so the situation is that the we were just waiting for Mr. Peters to get his documents filed. The um, um, Judge Fassett put on hold signing the immediate order appointing him until today. So we need to get that order signed to get him in place as well as get the uh, previous 
uh, case terminated where Ms. Uh, Cutbreath was appointed as the guardian. Um, and so I will go ahead and appoint you, Ms. Farr, um, in this matter. That makes sense. Um, and it seems like you're already uh, facilitating some efforts between um, getting the child transferred. Where's the child currently residing? He currently resides with me. Okay. Um, and your request is for him to be placed with Mr. Peters? Yes. Okay. Um, and Mr. Peters, it sounds like you have a lot of the paperwork ready. It just hasn't been filed yet. It's all ready to go. Yeah, okay. we're going to come down today and get it filed. Okay. Um, he, Your Honor, he filed the emergency. I petition. did do that. He just hasn't filed the permanent petition. And the reason I was guiding him to get that done is so he only had to serve mom once That's with reasonable. both. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Okay. Um, so what the court's going to do at this point, and sir, did you have a, did you propose a order? No. Um, okay. So what I need is an order that would actually transfer um, the child um, from this cut birth to you, sir. And I don't have that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the matter over, um, but I'm, I don't want it to go out far. Um, so I'm going to set the matter over just one week um, so that you can file the paperwork that you said is all ready to go. Um, and two, so you can propose an order placing you with the child. Um, and then that way, um, we're not sort of transferring the child when one person technically has guardianship and then but is living with you. We kind of end up in this weird in-between land um, that isn't uh, isn't very effective for the child or either of you. Sure. So I'm going to have you get that paperwork filed, um, propose an order to the court that places the child with you in the immediate um, guardianship case. Um, and, um, and I'm just going to set it over one week. So that gives you a very short timeline to get that all done. So the paperwork you said is ready to go, um, better be, because it basically does need to be filed today. It takes a little bit of time after you file for your paperwork to actually it gets scanned and then put into my system so I can see it. Um, sure. but I think that's the most responsible thing we can do to make sure that the child's transfer, um, is as smooth as possible. Okay. Your honor, you yes, should have the immediate order there in front of you. It was, it was presented to the court with the emergency filing and Judge Fassett said she pulled it from ex parte to hold on to it. Hmm. Judge Fassett signed that order saying that it was going to be dealt with today. So that okay. order has already been scanned and signed. Got it. Okay, so he just needs to present another immediate order that can yes. be signed ex parte. Could we do it ex parte instead of another hearing? I'm fine with doing it ex parte. Um, so if you can submit that order, um, it can be signed ex parte. Um, it should just reference the fact, uh, make sure it references the fact that the child's being transferred to Mr. Peters. Sounds like that's going to be cooperative. So I don't I don't mind it not having a real specifics about that. But that the case with Ms. Cutbirth then is being uh, dismissed by agreement. Okay, I'll help him with that. And they, they've been sharing um, custody of the child, basically. When I say custody, I mean physical physical right. custody. They the child's been going back and forth, so that's not an issue. All right, very good. Um, I don't have any issue with that being signed um, ex parte off the record. Um, with that, we don't um, need a further hearing next week. Um, I do want to make sure though um, that we proceed effectively. So as far as an as a review, Ms. Farr, do you have a recommendation? I do. So once he files the regular petition, then a hearing will be set to be heard on that, which is usually two or three weeks out. So that'll automatically trigger from the clerk's office. I want to set a hearing though. I don't want to just have a, a immediate order without a, a, any sort of review. We would set it by based on the immediate order that's being signed. Okay. And we would need we would need a hearing to okay. enter the emergency order once mom is served. Yes. So I still do need it. So I think that probably having a hearing next week. Um, is still reasonable. Um, so I'm still just going to put it on next week, uh, but you can submit the order um, in advance of that hearing so that the transfer of the trial can be effectuated okay. um, or completed. Um, and then we'll just sort of start reviewing where we are as far as service on um, on okay. uh, the parents um, but, under Mr. Peter's uh, petition. And then your honor, were you going to prepare the order appointing me or did you want me to do that and email it to your JA? Oh, if you would prepare that um, and send it to uh, the JA, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Um, are we sending both case numbers over or just Mr. Peters to next week? I'm going to set both case numbers over next week, um, just so that the court reviews, make sure that that order got entered that dismisses Ms. Cutbirth's um, petition. And I just want to have tracking on that. Um, For the final or for the regular minor guardianship, not the temporary one, 
do does Mr. Peters have to have me served or can he just serve the mom? Um, what I would you can just uh, Ms. Farr can help you with that piece of things. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. All right, Thank you. Great. Anything further from you, Ms. Farr, on this matter? I think that's it, Your Honor. I think you covered everything. All right. Very good. Uh, anything further from you, Mr. Peters? No, Your Honor. All right. Anything further from you, uh, Ms. Cutworth? No, thank you. All right. Appreciate everyone's time. Um, uh, work on sort of those um, cleanup matters so we can. Brunswick um, is the 255 cause, which I think is the focus of today. And then Bradley Peters is here. He, Mr. Peters has been patiently waiting uh, this oh, morning. So, Mr. Peters, can you hear me okay? Okay, I saw your mouth move, and I think you said yes, Your Honor, and it was just muted at the time. So just make sure that you can unmute because we had some issues with somebody. I'm I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Thank you. All right. Yes. And it looks like uh, is it Cateron? Is that how you pronounce your name, Cateron? Cadron. Cadron. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. A name. That's a great Thank name. You. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Miss Farr is present, um, and then uh, Shira Kroll. Um, is she on the line today? I'm here. I got a background going on on my thing. It's distracting me. That's okay. Sorry. That's no, you're fine. Okay. And then I'm gonna, um, I'm Scott. going to stop the video. Is, it, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. No, no, that's fine. Okay. So with that, um, with those introductions, um, there was an order of J July 19th of this year that transferred the child to the care and custody of Bradley Peters um, and noting him as the, the guardian and Ms. Farr was discharged as a court visitor and, and reappointed as guardian ad litem. And uh, I think we're on today and the parties can uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, that we're here on an order to show cause why Mr. Peters should not continue on as the guardian. I think that's why we're here. Ms. Farr? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, that's correct. And then also to dismiss the um, 136 case. Right. Okay. And the 136. Um, is there any objection to the uh, dismissing of the, what we call the 136 case? That's the, um, yeah. So Mr. Peters, do you have any concerns related to that? I'm a little confused um, about the dismissal of guardianship. Yeah. Ms. Farr, maybe you can just provide a little background on why that's, why you think that's appropriate. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, initially, uh, Ms. Cutberth was appointed as the, the um, immediate, uh, under the immediate order as guardian. Um, she's decided that she cannot go forward. Mr. Peters has filed a petition so that he can become the guardian. Um, and service has been made on mother under Mr. Peters filing. And so now we are looking at dismissing the first case under uh that was filed from Ms. Cutberth um and then continuing on with the second case where we would be appointing um Mr. Peters. Thanks. Okay. I understand. Perfect. Good. I, thank you, Ms. Farr, for that that explanation. And also the, the clerk just handed me a note that, that uh another judge had already dismissed that so prior to our coming today. So that, that's already taken care of. So we're we're good there. And that may not have already oh. been filed. I, I okay. I'm, I thought that we were doing that today, but I'm could be wrong. Yeah, it looks okay. like somebody, somebody got a, a jump start on that. So that 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 the one thirty six is dismissed. So that that takes care of that particular discussion. So thank you for that. Okay. And then we're on today um, for the related to whether Mr. Peter should continue on as the the guardian. Um, so. Um, I'll hear from the parties uh, related to that. Maybe, Ms. Farr, if you'd like to lead out, I'll hear from you first, and then Ms. Mr. Peters, and then from Ms. Kroll. Okay, Your Honor. So in, this is a matter where um, the child it has been living with uh, Mr. Peters for the better part of the last year, um, and mother is having some struggles. She's She has some drug addictions, homelessness, um, and there's currently a warrant for her arrest. And so the child is in Mr. Peter's care or and um, should remain there um, while mother um, improves her situation. And the and so for that reason, the um, emergency guardianship should be 
entered and Mr. Peters appointed as the emergency guardian. Okay. This is this child has some special needs, um, um, some mental health issues, and um, needs immediate uh, counseling and treatment. And Mr. Peters has been uh, working with Miss Cutbirth. Miss Cutbirth and Mr. Peters are siblings. They've been working together to get this child the help that the child needs. Okay. Great. Uh, and then also, just so you know, too, because you're new on this one, that the uh, father is deceased. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farr. Okay, thank you. Um, let me touch base um, with Ms. Kroll. Ms. Kroll, you've heard what Ms. Farr's okay. position is. What's, what's, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts on it are that I haven't been keeping close contact with Sherry. I have kind of hit, hit a depression. Like, I feel like um, anything I do or say in court's been gone backwards. I don't I'm having a problem making appointments and keeping them. I'm not having a problem with a drug addiction as far as like what they're thinking. I do smoke weed and drink every once in a while. Uh, I mean, it's like, I'm not doing good with this court thing at all. Um, it's just gone on and on. Me and Brad's relationship was completely toxic. Uh, the thought of hearing him talk after I am done talking, my heart's like literally racing. Uh, I've had a trauma response to all this. My son needs me. I haven't had a visit with him. We started court in uh, May, April, April 7th. I got served. I think I had a uh, court and I haven't gone very far at all with anything I need to be doing. I've had places I'm staying that didn't work out. Uh, I haven't been able to see my kids at all. There was a no contact order issued between me and Brad, which makes uh, a lot of things impossible. Um, through all this, I've lost my full-time job. I've lost, uh, pretty much everything that I was doing is just all different. Um, I don't know how to, I have a friend who's going to help me get a lawyer. Um, Brad, Bruno bring, being with Brad and Cadron, uh, I need outside help. This isn't working out <clears throat> at all. And it's just, I feel like it's just digging me a deeper hole. Um, I don't, I don't even know what to say. There's, I haven't like, I haven't even seen Joss in so long. My other daughter. Um, I don't feel like I'm not even saying the right stuff right now that I need to be saying that's most important. Um, I even went as far as to, um, I don't know. I don't, Bruno's really depressed. Every time I talk to him, he's miserable. Um, he can't talk. I have gotten maybe 10 minutes at a longest phone call. I don't ever have video chat. I never know where Bruno is between Brad and Cadron. Cadron says that Bruno's not in a good place being with him. It's been torture. All these things that are opposite to what I'm hearing. In court, they don't say anything against each other, but outside of court, it's completely different. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of things said about me after I'm done talking for the, saying that. I feel completely isolated from everything. I've been in my kids' lives for 10 years straight. And uh, this isn't going well. I even met with Sherry personally i have talked to her on zoom once he, she's just heard what brad said brad currently has an open cps case for sam uh got going the kids aren't as happy as he makes it seem <clears throat> both of them have gone to the hospital for um emergency uh they're saying they're suicidal sam ran down and had called and had committed herself to the hospital uh he drinks a six pack a day of alcohol he's an alcoholic that's worse i mean i have records of him you know us having to call the police for him harassing the family there's you know court paperwork from us having our no contact order before the declarations were you know everything's completely i have like nine declarations from people stating character i've never had the cops called on me in our home i don't even know where to start with all this it, and the court's just going worse and worse 
you know, I even went as far as to tell the other judge he had a smirk on his face. Like I don't, not doing good at this at all. I'm hoping this lawyer will help um, so I can have somebody advocate for me. And uh, it's like I'm not even going towards resources like I should be. I'm just I feel like I'm frozen. I just miss my kids, and I don't want to have to have me and Brad have a relationship just to have like, a relationship with my kids. This isn't even about me being da a danger to the family, which I've never been. This is more about controlling me and having me commit or submit to and come home. I've been asked to come home so many times, and every time I disagree, it, you know, court just goes uglier. I'm not willing to come home to have the same type of fights in front of our children. The last thing in the world I want to do is for them to hear one more fight and vile things said. And my son should be with me. I didn't even mean for him to be uh, left at the house. I had six days till court and I missed a court hearing in September. And then I went to the next one and things were already approved. I didn't even realize I missed a court date. And I've just been, I don't even know, lost ever since. I thought he was doing good. I'd call the school. I tried to go get him a couple times. They didn't send him to the office. I don't. Things aren't going according to, uh, this wasn't even a plan. I never planned on being out of my home. The system was used against me and I'm just out here uh, not moving forward. I don't. I need to keep, I haven't even kept my counseling appointments like I meant to. I haven't kept, I can have an assessment. They're not going to recommend treatment. I don't have, you know, I've had treatment experience. I don't know. Thank you for letting me talk. I bet would have been cut off a long time ago by now. Usually. I don't know how to move forward with this without. I don't, I don't know how to move forward with this. I've done CPS before, but I've never done court like this. And uh, I even missed court on purpose last week, last time. I didn't, I couldn't do it. And the time before that, I didn't, I couldn't even unmute it. So, Your Honor, I'd like to just add a couple things so that you have a broader picture. So um, Ms. Kroll and Mr. Peters were residing together. Um, they have another child together. Um, and that's when Ms. Kroll, you know, there was some issues between the two. There was some, there is some drug issues. And Ms. Kroll left the home about a year ago and Mr. Peters has um, had Bruno since. That's not um, true. Ms. Bruno was Ms. with Kroll, me. For, uh, Bruno was with me. And he wanted to go home. He was failing to thrive. He wasn't wanting to eat. He wasn't wanting to sleep. He wasn't wanting to take a shower or anything at anybody else's homes. I was having to find places to stay because I was kicked out of my home while I was at work. I was served. Bruno would stay with me at the hotel while I was working. Luckily, they would let me. Um, I only sent him home because I had six days till court and he really missed his sisters and he missed his dad. And when it didn't get approved, it was really hard to get him back out of the house. And last time I tried getting my son out of the house, Brad actually called the police, making a huge scene like I was kidnapping my son. He made a huge scene until I agreed to stay. And then he hung up the phone. It's oh, There's a lot more going on than just mom has a drug problem. Mom tried to fail. Mom tried to fake a UA. And it made it look really bad. I had weed and alcohol in my system and I'm pregnant. So. Did it do me any good? No. Did I get caught? Yes. Which is what happens every time I try doing anything like that. <clears throat> I haven't done anything to prove yes, otherwise. So. Yeah, Ms. Kroll, thank you. So thank you for that input. Go ahead, Ms. Farr. Yeah, so the court had <clears throat> ordered um, a UA and the, and Ms. Kroll is being honest. She did try to fake it. And, the, and so that counts as a positive and there hasn't been any attempts for a UA since that I'm aware of. We did have, her and I did have one Zoom. We had scheduled follow-ups, but we haven't had any follow-ups. Um, and so, um, you know, I only have some initial information from her. What I do have, the information that I do have, it has been provided by Mr. Peters and Mr. 
uh, and Miss Cutbirth. So, um, I, I, you know, the, this is a guardianship matter. It's not a dependency case. There's no resources offered to parents in these cases. And so, um, if it's just not going to be what Ms. Kroll expects and, and that it is unfortunate that there are no resources uh, to get parents help, but that's just the way these cases go. So we're, we're in a situation now where we have to get an emergency guardian appointed so that there is authority for uh, someone to make healthcare decisions and keep this child uh, safe from harm and provide for this child until we get further into this investigation. Bruno and had a person and Brad be, sent him to the emergency room to be evaluated years. for suicide, like an adult. These are the type of decisions I may don't I, want um, may And I, they put him on medication oh, without telling me anything about on, it. Mr. Peters. Yeah, so I, I just, I want to make sure we have decisions. an, I apologize. Uh, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure we have an orderly discussion. Um, because, Sorry about that. No, it's okay. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, when one person finishes that they, they, they feel like they've finished. And so I think Ms. Farr had a few things to, to, Finish, she's just finishing up. And yeah. So why don't you go ahead and finish up, Ms. Farr? Yeah. And so that is true. Um, Ms. Uh, Bruno has gone to the emergency room and it was the appropriate thing to do. He was in a mental health crisis. The mental health crisis team was called and he received the treatment that he needed. It got him started to get some mental health care. So Mr. Peters is the one that um, initiated that. Brad was drinking and got him so, riled up. So, Ms. Kroll, just so at I... this time, so at this time, we we just need to get the emergency guardian appointed, and that would be Mr. Peters. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, and then this investigation will continue. I will be in touch with Ms. Kroll, and Ms. Kroll needs to get um, her UA completed um, and comply with the court's orders before visitation could be put in place. Uh, that UA place said that they would, um, if the courts were willing to cover the cost, they have to email them or um, keep get in touch with them, that that was an option too. Otherwise I'd pay the $60 and it's $80 to be watched, like the watch UA or $60 just to go yeah. in. Um, it's just really expensive for me. And that's what I would say with Crowland. Unfortunately, these cases don't have the ability to, to provide resources to parents. It's, it's, this is, these are tasks that the parents have to take on themselves to improve themselves to show that they can uh, parent. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, thank you both. I appreciate that input. Mr. Peters, you wanted to make a, a brief comment? Uh, I, um, I, I'm not going to sit and defend myself on any of these allegations. My 17 year old daughter um who i've had custody of for over 11 years um i got custody years. of her from oregon Thanks and brought years. her here and um she was having has been suffering from anxiety and depression from other things from a boyfriend from um her boyfriend breaking up with her after prom that sort of thing and she has received the right treatment for that as well as Brunswick did. Um, so moving on from that, um, there hasn't been, I don't know what she's saying about trying to contact Bruno because yesterday was the first time she's called him in a month. And that is not good for him. That's what's really not good for him. This in and out, in and out, never knows where mom's at. Nobody knows where she's at. Nobody knows what she's doing because she doesn't think she has to check in or be responsible. And we are responsible for our own lives and what we're doing. And these children don't have a choice. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Um, Ms. Cut Cutbirth, do you have any, any input? Um, yeah, I would just say that um, Bruno is being taken care of. He does have um, special needs and um, I wouldn't think that it's fair to say that he's miserable or depressed he I mean he is Miss Shira said that you know he she can't talk to him she talked to him yesterday for 10 minutes on the phone um, <laughs> I felt like 10 minutes was appropriate because um, 
she hadn't talked to him in over a month. I it has not I, been a month. I excuse me, I'm talking. <laughs> um, I it has been over a month. She's missed every phone call for a long time. Um. Also, I'm just saying that I felt like 10 minutes was appropriate. He did get privacy. He was um, able to go into his bedroom or um, he chose to go sit on the landing at the top of our stairs, which is totally fine, too. Um, And when she did speak with him or when she does speak with him, she's only getting snippets of how it's going because she's not talking, communicating with other people to find out how he's doing she's just talking to him so she gets oh i'm up i'm upset he's a a, an 11 year old boy who hasn't seen his mom in over a year or not over a year but hasn't seen her in a long time and um i just feel like that's not really giving her the whole picture. Um, yesterday when she spoke with him, he was at my house taking a break because he was having a hard time with his dad. And I thought that getting him over to my house where I have a trampoline and a pool and things for him to do, kids for him to play with would be a good time for him. Kind of get him out of that. He was, um, he had gotten in trouble and not a lot, not in trouble, but a consequence where he wasn't allowed to play a system and that upset him. And so he, um, chose to act out. Me and Brad have initiated a lot of different ways to oh, help Bruno Ms. Cupper, manage. I, I apologize. Uh, just, just so you're aware, um, Ms. Kroll, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're in court and I, if we were in court, you wouldn't be able to smoke a cigarette. So I'd ask that you no, I'm sorry, your I'm... cigarette. <clears throat> Thank you. And then Ms. Cutberth, um, just do you have any additional comments just related to the, the emergency, the appointment of the emergency guardian, anything related to that, any additional items? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I just think that um, Brad's a good candidate. He, Bruno was originally left with him anyways, mm-hmm. and I stepped up to help Brad because Brad wasn't really um, entirely sure how to go about starting the process i helped him get the process started and we just decided that him staying with brad is the best option and we're working together to kind of support bruno in the best way that we know how um and i feel like so far we're doing a pretty good job considering the circumstances absolutely okay all right thank you all right i appreciate uh, hearing from from each of the parties related to to bruno and his well-being you know and really that's kind of the focus here and i think ms far kind of talked up talked uh, t- or touched upon that issue is that um we want to make sure that children are, are safe and well and protected and often it's not uncommon that p- parents struggle and the struggle is very challenging and difficult and um it sounds like ms kroll has experienced numerous factors that are really challenging including homelessness and then the pregnancy and then the, the fake UA and then the alcohol and the marijuana and not following through on, on some appointments. And so there's, there's a lot of factors, a lot of things that she's, she's working on and, and working through. And at the, so while she's working through that, we need to make sure that, that Bruno, which I love his name. It's a very great, it's a cool name, um, um, needs to be taken care of. And at this point, I think given the information that I've heard, is that there needs to be uh, some immediate protection uh, for him uh, while um, Ms. Kroll makes works and makes some improvements. And obviously, mm-hmm. as she makes those improvements, the need for that safety diminishes uh, because she's in a better place. She's in a better uh, spot to be able to provide that that care to to Bruno. So I'm going to grant that grant the the request for the appointment of the emergency guardian. Or can there be, and appoint him as a uh, Mr. Peters as a guardian. Can there be stipulations like he's not They're They're making major choices that I'm not involved in at all. Nobody's nobody would have even told me at your, all. About your honor, and I'm being respectful. treated. I'm talking. So, so hold I'm on, talking. Mr. Peters. Yeah. Yeah. We, we take turns. I'm being yeah, treated sure, like sure. I don't deserve to know. And I know my son. This isn't just me. Listen, when he tells me he's not doing or whatever, or he tells me a situation where he's complaining about an adult, I question him and I break it down and I, I, I could tell when he's both. When he's just pulling it over, I could tell when he's serious and he's every single time I talk to him and it's not been a month court just happened. Uh, he's just completely flat. Like it's just, 
So you were talking I, about I, that you wanted to have some some st stipulations regarding yeah, input, like, input like, regarding medical care, things of that nature. Yeah, if Jocelyn was to have a breakdown and say she wanted to hurt herself, she sure the heck wouldn't be sent to the emergency room like an adult and have a... Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. I've seen the way Brad acts around him like that. And I don't, it makes it worse. It's like they're trying to make him seem crazier than he is. Brad is interested in the income he'll be receiving for social security for his dad and social security because of his mental health and how it would help the household income. That's not what this is about. And I have another option Avenue. I was thinking about as far as um, a caregiver for him, somebody that he knows. And I, if we can set the court date over. I or, um, I'm even contemplating just, uh, I, I really need to talk to this lawyer. Yeah. And I feel like, I think, uh, I think you're, you're on the right or, track. Or, scroll, is that, or you if know, you can just not, there's not any major decisions made. If we can hold it over. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm granting the order. I'm granting the relief. And then I think it's important to note. Uh, what you just said, Ms. Crow, and what Ms. Farr said is that the, the, the investigation continues. This is not a static case. People change, people make improvements. And as you make improvements and you get counsel um, and the case is, is moving forward, and it can certainly go in, in many different directions. And that's the hope is that the, the, the well-being of, of Bruno is safeguarded and preserved. That, that, that's the hope. And so it's not static. You'll, you'll have continued opportunity to have to have input. So having granted that uh, pro pro the, the, the request, um, I was just looking at the in the, the case file and maybe Ms. Farr, you could help me identify this as far as their as far as the order appointing uh, guardian and the like was was were any of those proposed orders filed? I see a proposed residential schedule uh, for guardianship, but I, I, is that the only order? I'm fairly new to this. Uh, yeah, no, Your Honor, we, there wasn't, uh, as far as I know, there was not an order presented to you. Um, Mr. Peters could probably get that down to the court and, and have it entered ex parte by tomorrow. Yeah, I think, um, I, think I do have know, it. It's a in the, residential schedule so that Mr. Peters did file that. So I think that's the one that I'm looking at. And yeah, that's different and, than the emergency okay. order. Okay, so I need an emergency order. Before I get started, it is. Uh, I first want to make sure that I get out all the under code. I do something yeah. called DOC. Sorry. So I need an emergency <laughs> order appointing. So we, we, Go ahead, Ms. Farr. Appointing the emergency guardian. We could get that down to you um, by tomorrow to have entered. And in that, there are some options where I, I believe, I'm not looking at the order in front of me, but I believe there's some options where mother can have access to records. I don't think at this time, um, decision making should be appropriate given the fact that we don't have uh, current, you know, we haven't had a UA or anything to show that mother can uh, make appropriate decisions. And can he be he he be being UA for alcohol because it's not appropriate. He's drinking as much as he is around the kids. He doesn't handle well, it well, and he overreacts. Your Honor, with all due respect to myself, him every I, single I day. don't, I, so, 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 I don't so, have an active warrant for me. my arrest right pardon now. That's nothing pardon to do me. with your alcohol. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Ms. Farr, do you have any concerns related to Mr. Peters and alcohol consumption and care of uh, Bruno? This is the first allegation I've heard about uh, alcohol consumption. So I will look into that as the okay. standard uh, case goes forward. <laughs> Okay, so that's that sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad the issue was raised. Ms. Kroll's uh, concerns can be addressed related to that. Um, so I will sign off on the order that's coming my way related to the appointment of the emergency uh, guardian and then the residential schedule for the guardianship. Um, uh, I will sign off on that also. And that will get filed. Uh, so as far as a future court hearing, uh, Ms. Farr, do you have a proposed time frame? If um, for the standard investigation i i would say um we probably could set a review out for a month that should give me some time to do some investigating on the cps allegations the alcohol allegations and then give mom time to get that ua done okay all right um i think that sounds appropriate so we'll set the matter over to August 24th at 1030. 
And just confirming, um, Ms. Mr. Peters and Ms. Cole, you're available on August 24th at 1030. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. That sounds good. So, going by, I haven't seen my kids physically in so long. Yeah. I mean, so if I'm I get hold off. In, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And the judge had ruled that we have two phone calls a week. He never said exact times or anything like that. I get that routine and scheduling is important, mm -hmm. but talking, just talking, being able to talk to your mom is really important too. And I not always, I really am struggling with depression. It's really hard for me to want to even move some days. Like it's a right. lot on top of postpartum or depression. And it's, uh, I call an hour later or whatever it is, or it's, the kids don't even want to be on the phone. He can't, he doesn't like the phone. It's awkward. They don't know what to do. And seeing me on zoom makes it harder. It hurts. It hurts them. It's, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to call. I just feel like I'm breaking their heart every time. Okay. And uh, I don't, it's weird. I spent every single day with them for 10 years. Never once, like one night overnight, not, and then to nothing. And having a restraining order from my home and my family for no reason. It was all, it's not that we're talking about right now. Okay. Um, this is, yeah. yeah. So there's a, Ms. Krull's expressing a lot of concerns related to the contact and the like. And well, in a way, the way I'm looking at this is that the, we need to keep the, the horse in front of the cart. And the horse, obviously, in this case, is uh, making sure that Ms. Kroll is engaging in services and taking the UA, uh, being evaluated for the SUD and also for any mental health concerns and then getting treatment and support because nobody gets through this life without that support. So that's kind of, that's where we're getting at at this point. So I'm going to hold off on uh, making any uh, provisions, specific provisions for, for phone calls. Obviously, if the parties want to agree to something, then they can, but I'm going to hold off on, on, on ordering that. So we'll see everybody on the, on the 24th. Um, one more thing. We're complete. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll see everybody on the 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see Ms. Farr, uh, Ms. Powers. Um, I do see um, like service um, in this matter um, on the old guardian. Um, and just one moment here. We have service on mother. We don't have service on father or proof of death on father. And I've been asking um, Mr. Peters to obtain that death certificate to confirm that. We don't have anything to confirm that father is deceased. Okay. Um, and um, I just spoke with mother a couple of days ago and I thought she was going to be here this morning, but she is requesting an attorney to be appointed for her. Okay. And that is Shira Kroll? Yes. Okay. And Ms. Kroll, if you're on the phone, please press star six to unmute. All right. I'm not inclined to appoint attorneys if folks don't appear. Um, you have to at least be invested enough to appear. Um, and I don't see any indications that there's some barrier to their appearance, um, certainly not via, via Zoom. Um, so parties need to appear. I, I'm willing to, we need to set over anyway, um, because at this point I don't have service on mother. Um, I don't have proof of death um, as to father. Um, so we're going to be setting over anyway. Um, Ms. Farr, you can let mother know if she wants an attorney, she needs to appear. Uh, okay. She needs to at least be that invested um, for the court to spend funds to hire mm -hmm. counsel for her. She uh, has appeared at most of the other hearings. I don't know what the issue is today. Okay. Um, the... Um, and then um, to you, sir, um, Mr. Peters, um, since you're requesting um, to be the guardian, um, it's your obligation to obtain that death certificate and get a copy of it filed with the court. Um, yes, Your Honor. So I received um, the application for that death certificate yesterday in the mail, and it's all filled out and going to be sent back to California today with a money order. And then they will send me a copy of said birth certificate. I did obtain Bruno's actual birth certificate through the vital statistics here in Washington, but it's been tricky with dad because nobody, I haven't been able to get mom to cooperate in anything with me. And especially even letting me know, like she knows where he died, what part of California and she won't tell me. And it's just a constant battle of like, I don't want to tell you anything. I, you know, I just not co no cooperation, nothing, no phone calls to the kids, nothing. 
And it's a lot when I'm not just taking, I'm taking care of Bruno, but I'm also taking care of his younger sisters. And I have been by myself for a year. And um, I was in, you know, a, a domestic relationship with Miss Kroll. And it was, and it ended up being a domestic violence relationship, which the kids were, you know, subject to. And that's why I got the court order to get her out. She bit me in the face and um, it was, had continuous substance abuse problems that wouldn't stop. And um, I I agree. We're we're here. We're here today really um, as on a review. Um, I don't have, I don't have a parent um, obviously appearing. Oh, hold on. I have Ms. Kroll who is going to be admitted. Give me just one moment. Ms. Kroll? Hi. Hi. All right. Um, so uh, we're calling um, right now. We're discussing um, your child, Brunswick. Did you just now call my name? Uh, we just started this case a few oh moments ago. That's good. Uh, I wasn't, my data wasn't working, so I just was able to log in. I had to go somewhere else. So it's funny it worked out that way. All right. Um, so in this case, um, currently, um, the court has appointed Mr. Peters as the emergency guardian. That doesn't, um, so that's a, effectively a temporary order. Um, and so we can um, address things further. Um, I have Ms. Farr um, as well as Ms. Powers representing um, the state. Um, the, um, concern here, um, is powers. Um, she represents the state of Washington. Okay. Um, I just found out yes, or yesterday that I'm able to uh, ask for an attorney. I thought I had to find one on my own. Okay. Um, are you currently employed? No. Okay. So the court will attempt to find you an attorney. Um, I, was, I, was, I wish I was aware of that a while back. Cause it would have helped a lot. Um, okay if an attorney is available. So I still Mm -hmm. encourage, it it can be very challenging for us to find counsel for folks. Um, It may take some time. Um, So I do also encourage folks to, if you can find counsel on your own, I I certainly encourage that um, as well. All right. Um, I will put in an order um, and the court will work to um, find you counsel. Um, But again, that's as they are available to do so. I appreciate it. All right. Um, So in this case, um, sounds like you've received um, service of the documents in this matter. Is that right? Uh, no, they were served to my mother, which I've never told anybody I lived with her. Uh, yeah. I never got those. My I would never have suggested giving them to my to my mom. We don't what really address? talk a lot. What address do you wish to be served at? Um, I can come pick them up if I if possible from the courts. Um, if it was easier, I can have you, Miss. Do you have Miss Farr's phone number? Yeah. Great. I'm gonna have you get a copy from. I'm going to have you get a copy from Ms. Farr. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Your Honor, our office also needs a way to um, provide notice to Ms. Kroll about our request for child support. The address we had on file is the same as uh, Mr. Peters, so I don't, that's not a very effective address. Um, Ms. Kroll, where would you like to receive documents? So it doesn't have to be where you live, um, but I need an address where people can send you things associated with this case. Um, is it possible to have them emailed? If that's what's the best for you, that is, is. Uh, the course not going to get in the way of that. Okay. Yeah, it would definitely be easy. Okay. What's your email address that you want the documents sent to? It's uh, okay. It is great. Thank you. That way the parties can send you emails when things get filed okay. and you can be kept aware of what's happening in the court case and they don't have to send it to like somebody else like Ms. Peter, yeah. Mr. Peters, and you're not getting the documents to know what's going on. All right. Very good. Um, so, Your Honor, I'm happy to send Ms. Kroll copies. I, I just don't think that I should be doing a uh, service that's because fine. I'm a neutral party. I think that's, that's the responsibility of Mr. Peters. Right. Your Honor, um, Ms. Kroll's mother. Hold on, hold on. Here's what we're going to do. Ms. Kroll, would you like to receive the documents via email? That would be helpful. Great. Um, so, Mr. Peters, I'm going to have you send those documents, scan them, and send them to Ms. Kroll via email. Okay. Because okay. she's agreed to accept service of the documents okay. that way. I'll have to write it down. Her mother told me she'd been staying with her. Her mom frequents and visits I know, the kids. But today, I don't, none so. of that matters. The only thing that matters right now is that she's agreed to accept them via email. Okay. Well, that's nice that she's agreed. Um, what's so... Uh, 
So where we are right now is that uh, Ms. Kroll has not been formally served. Um, so we need that to happen. I and mean, we need proof of the death certificate to be filed um, as well. And it sounds like Mr. Peters is um, on board with that. Um, and getting that done. Um, so that's I great. Tried, uh, getting a hold of, sorry to interrupt, of Aisha, the biological father's uh, daughter. And uh, the messages haven't been gotten through to her yet. But um, we're not going to address that. So I tried to reach out to. Okay. So at this point today, we don't have service and or proof of death from the parties that I need to have service on before we move forward. So what okay. I'm going to do is I'm going to set the matter over for a few weeks to give everybody additional time to accomplish those tasks. Um, and that also gives Ms. Farr additional time um, to continue um, working on her end um, and provide getting the materials and information that um, she needs. All right. Okay. So that being understood, I'm going to set the matter over to September 14th. Um, that gives... Um, little bit of time um, for those things to happen. It sounds like some things are happening via correspondence and that can take some time um, to complete. Uh, any questions or issues, Ms. Farr? Uh, those are the main issues. There are some other issues, but I don't think this is the appropriate time to go into them. Very good. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Peters, um, so any issues with setting the matter over to September 14th? No, Your Honor. Okay. And you understand that you need to send an email with all the documents to Ms. Kroll? and then obtain the death certificate and get that file. Yes, it would have been much easier to just do that. I get it. Yes, that, that's fine. Good. Uh, and you'll need to provide a proof of service to the court once you send Ms. Kroll the documents via email. Yes. Good. Any issues from you, Ms. Powers? No issues. Thank you. Uh, any issues, Ms. Kroll? Um, are we able to, uh, Sherry's given me a few requirements in order to have visits with Bruno. If I was able to get those done and to her, is, is she able to approve before our next court date visits with Brunswick or not? Or do we need to wait till then? We're going to wait. Um, okay. If there's an agreement between the parties, that's fine. But otherwise, um, otherwise we're going to wait. Just okay. to clarify, what I did tell her was that I would need proof of uh, uh, yeah. some drug testing before I could make those recommendations to the court. Perfect. And then uh, appropriate place to visit with I mean, that's so still work on what Ms. Farr has suggested, yeah. and then we can review that on the 14th. Um, if visits haven't been agreed to and you've done those things and provided that information to Ms. Farr, then we can address that okay. on the 14th. Thank you. All right, that's it for this matter. Um, thank you all. I'll enter an order that extends um, the current orders out through the 14th um, and also allows service via email on Ms. Kroll. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Your Honor, I was appointed to represent the mother. I don't know if she's present. She is not. I received a message from a friend of her saying that she was at the ER. Um, I'm not sure what that has to do. I, I don't know what it was about. I just know that I don't know if there's complications in the pregnancy that she's having or um, I'm not, I didn't get the detail. I just know that she was there. All right. And Ms. Coder, are you in a position to proceed today? No, I'm not. Um, I don't have any con good con the contact information I have. There's been um, the phone number's not working. So I'm wondering if the guardian has a more current phone number. Uh, the guardian gave me one, but um, her, the person applying for the guardianship, I don't know if he's got any, has any contact with her. Um, no, not at this time, but I, through friends and things like that, I, um, what, if I could get before we're done here, if I could get your contact information, I could get that along to her and tell her you need to speak with her. I'm sure that would be great. And I, um, I have your information. I will send you an email with the other information. Okay. Okay. And, then and Ms. Farr, anything you would add? Um, I did send Ms. Kudo an email this morning with what contact information I do have. Okay. And Mr. Peters, you said you yeah. think she might be in the hospital? Uh, that's like I said, that's that's what I heard. Okay. Uh, I heard that she was at the ER and I, d I don't really know what it's about. Ms. Cotto, I'm going to suggest we put this out about a month then. That um, work for you? Yeah, it would have to be a little bit further than a month. Um, I would ask to the end of October. Because I'm gone until the 22nd of October. Okay. 
Uh, well, let's make it, uh, it would be November the 2nd. Okay. And I, do I need a, an order extending the temporary guardianship? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> I think that the current one ends on 920. All right. Um, we're putting it out pretty far, and I, I just want to bring to the court's attention, I have some serious concerns about Mr. Peter's ability to be the guardian He's very well aware of what those are. We've had discussions. Um, so um, I I will talk with Ms. Kudo, but I think, you know, we, I guess we do have the option of, of other alternatives or bringing it back on a docket before then if we need to. All right. So okay, I think I'll that's appropriate. To... Mr. Okay. Peters? Yes. You understand those concerns? Um. Well, you, you've heard him from the... Yeah, yes, yes, Your okay, Honor. so obviously you need to make her happy. Understood? Sure. Okay. Ms. Cotto? Um, I will, I've communicated, I've sent, responded to Ms. Farr, and I'll speak with her hopefully in the next, within the next week. I've given her my availability so we can kind of figure things out. All right. Thank you. I saw Miss Cotto. I'm present, Your Honor. There she is. And uh, my client is present. Um, and we are not, at, she has indicated that they're, we're opposing placement with the, um, the petitioner on this matter. Um, I was unavailable for several weeks, so I wasn't able to talk to Ms. Kroll, but, um, we're going to be asking for dismissal of the um, of the minor guardianship, and we're going to be asking for placement of the child with my client. Um, she's a capable and available parent, and I believe the guardian ad litem is here and has information that may be pertinent to my request. Ms. Farr? Good morning, Your Honor. So I, I intended to get a report filed by, by today, but I wasn't able to. So just to give you a verbal uh, report, Ms. Kroll has provided me with clean UAs, um, Ms. and I have examined the um, home that she's living in, which is an appropriate home for the child to be returned to her at. There's a bedroom for him, everything's set up. Uh, Ms. Kroll recently had a baby, so she's a stay-at-home mom at the moment. She's able to take care of him properly. She is clean and sober. And as I have spoke with the court previously, the um, the current temporary guardian it has I've had some serious concerns with. It's it's been since May, uh, so we're looking at seven months now that he hasn't complied with requirements. There's still not proper service. There's still not a death certificate. He hasn't provided me with his criminal history. He hasn't completed the the lay guardian training, and I don't even see him here today. Yeah, I don't see Mr. Peters here. I don't see him in the waiting room. So my recommendation is that the child should be returned to the mother immediately and the guardianship dismissed. All right. Well, under the circumstances, I don't think I have much other choice. Uh, Ms. Cotto, if you'll get an order. Okay, I can do that. Here, we'll get that signed. And would Okay, you, so would it'll be an order, order dismissing the guardianship me? and then my client will have immediate custody of the child, Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, I'll present my fees separately then. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Shira, I'll give you a call. Guardianship of Mickey Erickson. Okay. Thank you. All right. 